boring tonight, mm -hmm. but since we're missing two, I think we'll just kind of run through things and do an overview. And we have Mike Richard here from um, Engineer Architect, which company? Weston and Sam, whoops, am I on mute? Yeah, Weston and Sampson, that's Mike. Just in case you had any questions about uh, the, fees the article for the uh, architectural and the OPM for the DPW building. I've got a lot of questions. Should we jump to capital first then, David, so that we can? Yeah, so that way we can let Mike go so he doesn't have to spend his whole night with us. I know he probably has other things to do, so. Um, all right, uh, Linda, are you able to share the warrant on the screen? Um, you said I could. You want to share the warrant, is that right? Okay, I've got so many things here to share. Uh... Is that up? Yep. Okay. So one is the uh, changes to the general budget. Then we have cleaning up prior capital balances. Then we have the capital articles. And then um, do you want to go right to the debt exclusion, David, or where do you want to? Let, let's jump right to um dpw just since mike's here okay and then yeah. we'll go back and hit the other ones yep yeah. we will be getting this spacing right for the final versions i see we've got a heading on one page uh they're already uh i did send this out to department heads on saturday and there were a couple of things that we're able to or that we are uh just had to shift around a little bit so it's going to lay out just a little bit differently but not much okay there we are to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, authorize the treasurer to borrow, transfer from available funds, or otherwise approved. Approved. Hmm. Where did they come up at? Uh, $3 million to pay the costs of architectural design work for the new DPW building or take any action there, too. Um, provide. I think that's supposed to be provide, not proved. So we'll get that fixed. Yep. Um, so this is this is the uh, this has been to capital committee, and uh, they, uh, as we'll go through later, capital planning committee approved all the capital articles, but put a put a hold button on this one. They had a few questions, and David, you you were there, so I think best for you to take it from here. Okay. Yeah. Um, so couple of concerns on the DPW article. Um, one is that, you know, we're asking for $3 million of a $30 million project. And the fear was by some of the members at the Capitol Committee was that if, you know, we're not necessarily being as, I guess, transparent as we could be or giving the voters the full story with asking for just 3 million and then spending that and then saying, oh, by the way, we need another 27 million ish to make this happen at a later date. I think the concern was that if we go through this process, we authorize the 3 million, it sits on the shelf, so to speak, and, you know, waiting to be spent, some of it's spent for the design phase. What happens if, uh, you know, when we go back to town meeting for the other 27 million, uh, the voters then say no, and we've, I guess, not necessarily wasted, but we've spent $3 million for, for no reason or authorized the spending of $3 million for no reason. Uh, so there was a little bit of talk about, should we ask for the entire dollar amount for the entire project up front? Should we do something that could be done in phases rather than, uh, you know, the, the entire $30 million project. And then the other questions we had for maybe Mike can chime in on this is how much of this $3 million is actually for the basic design phase rather than the build phase of the project. And $3 million seems like a heck of a lot of money for just a design phase of this size project. So th th those were some of the questions that came up. Do you want me? Do you want me yeah, to turn that I, now? I I would, Mike. That would be great. I just want to mention too, as well. Um, I I, I uh, 
had touched base with David early uh, late last week and um, uh, wanted to just, as we entered into this meeting, um, what information would be helpful. And so David did share some concerns that I had been hearing consistently. And so um, just, I had shot that email to um, JP. Uh, he wasn't in all weekend. And so Mike did see it. Um, he uh, And so Mike responded today. And I, I know that um, it would it'd be easier for him to provide those answers than to have me do that. Um, but also to know that this is also gonna still be going before the feasibility study. Thank you. Mr. Chair, can I, is it okay if I? Absolutely. Sure. Okay, excellent. Um, so the question was, is, is how much is for design? And it is, it is 3 million that we suggested for design at this point, but that special design includes some additional items that um, I'm gonna talk about. One is uh, under chapter 149, the town is gonna have to hire an, an OPM and owner's project manager. So that's covered in here as well. Uh, we also have a contingency in there at this point for specialty design services. We don't have the information right now. Um, so what else might come up that we don't know about? Do we have to do specialty foundations and design specialty foundations, et cetera? It's a placeholder, it's a contingency, it's an allowance. That, 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 that's all it is. Um, to your question uh, uh, about um, phasing, you can certainly phase a project like that. As we all know, construction prices have increased dramatically over the last four or five years. Um, we're starting to see a lot more towns request phasing, um, both in the design as well as in the construction aspect of the project. So that's not an unusual request at all. The way we typically approach these jobs is right now we don't have the benefit of a design, right? We have what other public works operations have been doing. We have the average bid price of all those projects over the past, you know, 10 years or so. And what we've done is we've carried that through. Doesn't mean it's specifically, uh, it, it directly pertains to, to Hadley, but that's all we have for information right now. So we're just taking a percentage of, of that at this point in time. The way the design process uh, moves forward is, is we start off with concepts, then we move into schematic design. Schematic design is where we really pick up a lot of the design pieces. What's, what is specific to Hadley? What do you want for your HVAC systems? What do you want for your security systems? What do you want for your foundations or what's required for your foundations? We're not gonna design it all at that point, but we write that up in a narrative form. Some of it goes on plan, some of it goes on narrative, and we're able to give that to an independent cost estimator who's able to price it out more accurately. From there, assuming it, it falls within line of what the town is looking for, then we'd be authorized for the next phase of the work, which would be design development, which would take it up to about 75% design, and then from there, construction bid documents which would be 100% design, uh, and it'll be bid ready at that point in time. So you could break it out in, in the design aspect for that, for, that, um, for that purpose. Usually when we get to that level, that's when we might say, okay, this isn't gonna fit within the town's budget. Can we just build for our, our immediate needs and then add on the phases later? What a... Uh... Roughly the cost of the getting to the schematics phase, what would we be looking at? We can typically get a pretty good schematic design with a good cost estimate um, for 200,000, maybe 225, including the OPM. Okay. Um, Amy, Andy, your thoughts on? I, I have a the question being 
um, on the design work that for the um, uh, for the plan, we did the library or we did the senior center and the others, but those were the the plans were all within when we went out to um, when we approved the project as a whole. I think I heard somewhere that maybe that design was uh, cost maybe 50,000. So maybe I'm wrong on the numbers, but I thought that that was all within. So mm -hmm. my thinking is, yes, the um, prices of lumber, the prices have gone up quite a bit, but I see that we're just using those numbers are based, you're using them based on a, a percentage of all these increased numbers, but the service hasn't gone up. It's not just because the price of lumber goes up doesn't mean it costs them more to do the to do the work. I don't understand why, how they can um, justify that they should get paid more. Uh, I'll be happy to answer that, Mr. Chair, if that's OK. Please. Yeah. So so that's that's a very good question. Right. And so what we're what we're finding through this process is we have to answer a lot more questions. We have to value engineer. We have to reduce the scope. So we've been getting into a lot more um, uh, reiterations uh, than we typically would under under a normal design. So but that that is a very good question. We hear that a lot. And and to that point too, what we will do as we move forward is a specific scope will be written to your project specifically. This is just a percentage now. Andy, anything? Yeah, there's a, certainly a lot more involved here than um, you know a, a straight up building um, like the uh, senior center or the library, which had its own set of requirements. But obviously, there's a lot more uh, of um, planning and design for things like wash bays and containment and fuel depots and um, and you know, proper access for existing structures and then methods to, you know, the, the committee, the DPW committee spent a lot of time trying to uh, take a cost-effective approach. And there's a lot of reutilization of the existing main structure, but some things just can't all fit in the same spot. So, and certainly when we first heard the number, there was a deep breath, but um, like so many other numbers that we've heard these days, you know, that it just keeps getting higher and higher and higher, um, almost um, multiples over year over year. So um, uh, this seemed like to be a pretty cost-effective approach reutilizing the same property, the uh, main building. Um, and so we were, um, and, Committee spent a lot of time going to different uh, DPWs in the area that were of similar size or similar function, and trying to you know take a right size approach. Um, anyway, that's uh, where they've come up with the numbers to start, and there was a pretty big contingency. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy of the budget in, in my hands, but I think it was on the order of six million dollars um, for escalations and contingencies. Which is something that was not built into those other pro or other projects initially. You know, they certainly had to come back and add on and add on. Or um, this one, I was um, surprised, but I, I can certainly see the wisdom behind putting such a big piece of it into the project for uh, delays and unexpected costs. So. And obviously, this is a select board decision to to change the warrant, but we can certainly make a recommendation. I think they meet Wednesday. Um, I, I guess my fear is it, we need to do something there. Obviously, that we're way behind the curve with getting something done at the DPW. Um, I think when people hear that their taxes are going to go up nine hundred eighty dollars a year on a four hundred thousand dollar house for thirty years just to pay for a DPW, um, there, I've had a lot of pushback in in town from people, and I think when we're going to face that at town meeting, so in in my mind, the getting to the schematic phase would make sense, spending the hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So we can get a real cost estimate because 
you know, if it came in at 20 million, that's, that's a heck of a difference in the tax bill versus a $30 million bill. And I think uh, there's quite a, a lot better chance that it would pass town meeting and a ballot vote to make it happen versus people just having sticker shock and saying, the heck with it, I don't care what we need down there. I don't even know what the DPW looks like, but I'm not voting to add $1,000 onto my tax bill every year. Um, so that's, that, that's how I'm leaning as far as uh, maybe recommend that we get through the schematics. I think town meeting will approve that $150,000, no problem when they are shown pictures. I mean, we have an open house coming up at the DPW, people can go see it. But I think once we explain the conditions, the, the safety issues down there, the you know $500,000 pieces of machinery that are sitting outside in the weather, um, I think that's an easy sell versus 30 million. So Amy, Andy, any thoughts one way or another? I, my thought is, as of right now, I don't, I, I really want the DPW to go forward. And it, with just like you mentioned, the 30 million, I haven't heard anybody that would approve such a large amount right, right away right now. So at this point, I'm not in favor of the uh, $3 million plan, because if we can't get the whole thing to go, I don't want to waste the $3 million if it's not going to go. If we can come up with more creative another way or something that we think we can get to pass, I'd be all for that because I think this is one of the most important things that we need to focus on is the DPW. That wash bay is huge. All these, I mean, there's some big things here. This is an important building, but I don't want to just put the 3 million there and because that we need to have it, it i don't see it going through um the whole thing i haven't seen anybody that said oh this is this is going to go through with no problem so i think we need to we, we need to come up with a um another option to get it to pass now meeting we need some more positivity and something else because i don't want i rather see the whole thing and i rather it pass than than um to just see three million dollars be put on the shelf and the, and and if you could promise or if you could give me really good percentages on saying well if if we do the three million now there's a good chance we'll get 15 million in a grant the chances of that i have not heard are above like that are not like 90 percent chances that we're going to get that i mean there is a there is a chance but they're not that high and also to risk that money it's it's not a, a large enough of a chance that will i haven't been hearing a large enough chance to risk that um so that's how i feel right now unless we can uh, I, I don't know get more positivity behind it more reasons Andy, were you were you on the committee for the DPW? Uh, yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? All right. Okay. So yeah, we've got. Um, uh, unfortunately, the, I, I missed the the last meeting where they were uh, came up with the three million dollar figure, but um, certainly we got to look at the larger budget. Um, I am in, uh, like you, David. Uh, would like to see a um, a little bit more harder number. Um, of what we're actually looking at versus, um, you know, based on what we've seen, this is where we're going to be because that that number does have so much headroom in it um, that it might just scare people away. Uh, granted, nowhere near compared to what our neighbors are looking at for price tags when it comes to projects like this, you know, three and four and five times it. Um, but and that may be certainly part of the sticker shock, but like other projects, it would be good to know, you know, what are we really looking at getting and uh, committing to before we commit such a large portion of $3 million. So I, I do agree that the study, is, I mean, the, uh, uh, you know, the feasibility study, it's certainly a, um, uh, a design study, excuse me, uh, is, is um, an appropriate amount to try to get a, to harden that number up. So 
we can do a little uh, more diligence, just like we again have asked for other more recent projects. So I guess um, Amy or Andy, if you want to make a, a motion to just recommend to the select board that they consider changing the Warren article uh, at their meeting to the one hundred fifty thousand. And and Mike, is that a pretty is that a conservative estimate, or is there a good chance it would go over that to go through the schematics? Or I I think if you if you do two twenty five. I think that should cover that plus the OPM. You will need an OPM for the schematic design. Okay. So then, you know, if someone wanted to make that motion, I, I'm happy to send that recommendation and it's a select board decision, not ours, but I, based on what I'm hearing from the three of you, I'm not sure that we would even recommend this article as it stands right now. So it's, you know, I will oh. make a motion. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. What was the dollar amount again? Two twenty-five. Is that right? Yeah. Go ahead, Andy. I just wanted oh. to get the correct dollar amount. Sure. I'll make a motion to amend the the um make a recommendation to the select board that they amend the article to two twenty-five for the um uh the design work to include the OPM to um get a far more accurate estimate of the entire project. Second. Okay, any other discussion on that? All right, I'm gonna roll call it, Amy? Yes. Andy? Yes. And I'm yes as well. So we'll let the select board see what they wanna do with that um, <laughs> and go from there. And um, hopefully we'll get something rolling one way or another because we definitely need it down there. So. Okay. All right, uh, Mike, anything else you wanted to, to add? Um, no, I just want to say thank you. And, um, you know, we'll, we're, we're here to assist if any other questions come up. Okay. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. All right. Um, Linda, do you want to knock out the other capital while we're on that article? Okay. Uh, the other two ex debt exclusion articles. One is for the school locker rooms. This is both boys' locker room and the girls' locker room. They're both 500 and uh, about, well, about half that, about 535,000 each. And um, school has a, a plan of spending quite a bit of money out of their other sources for different renovations. And this is the part that they're looking to the town for, um, for the first couple of years. So because it is an amount certainly more than we have in cash, uh, I recommended to the Capital Planning Committee that this be a debt exclusion article, debt exclusion override, would, um, and it was approved by the Capital Planning Committee, three approved, none against, and two abstained. I'm looking, how much would it be per tax bill on this one? Uh, Dan had it, uh, let's see, increase in the average bill over five years, 96, and over 10 years, $59. Am I reading that right, Dan? <laughs> Is that where you're on? Oh, I found That's it. Yes. Well, what are we going to recommend? Are we looking to... I'm guessing is do you have a recommendation, Linda, based on pricing on what you would recommend? Uh, whether we well, it, it depends on the other articles that are going to pass. Um, if what I'm thinking is they're going to get going right away on the locker rooms. So we would borrow that money on the earlier side. And uh, the fire truck we won't be borrowing for, and you'll, we'll get to that next. We won't be borrowing it for that for a couple of years. So I would want to do the shorter end um, on the locker rooms so that we would it, be paying more in each year so that we get it out of the way and be ready for the fire truck when we borrow on that one. And in both cases, probably borrowing them short so we'll be ready for the DPW building. 
Um, our goal has been with the, both the with all the capital borrowing that we keep the um, keep things as even as possible over the years. That we don't want to have an up and a down and uh, and and a drastic change. So what we would try and do is maybe make that increase early, uh, make the increase in the first year to cover both of these purchases, but although in the first two or three years, all of the payments would be going to, to pay off the locker rooms, and then they, we would sort of feather in, as David used to say, feather in the uh, payments for the fire truck as that came about. And I think that that would work well. And depending on how the other articles go, we may not even need to um, do it as part of a bond. We could keep it in the short term borrowing if we pay it over five years and we're able to do that. So we'll we'll take more of a look at it, but that's what I'm thinking at this point. Okay. Is that is are we um saving on rate? Um well I think that the bond and the band rates are closer now than they used than they were a year ago. So we have, uh, I think uh, Dan estimated uh, 6%. And um, because our last band, the band we just took out was a bit over, uh, was just under 5%. So I thought maybe going to 6% was a good idea. Since then, David Eisenthal has said he thought still estimating 5% might be enough. So we will certainly do the best we can. Um, the reason that a ban, even if it had a slightly higher rate, it would still be cheaper because of all of the administrative costs in acquiring one. And again, this depends on how soon we have to go out for a bond for other reasons. So if we have a reason to go to be uh, bonding in two years, then we would probably take the balance of the locker room and put that into the bond. But if we don't have another reason, depending on other things that pass, then we might leave it in the band, the short-term borrowing, and just pay it off um, over five years. Okay. Well, this is gonna be difficult to try to figure this out because the way we're gonna go down, you're, if we tell our taxpayers, okay, it's gonna be $96, that's with us thinking we're doing maybe one other, but if we're happen to be doing all of them, we might want fifty nine dollars. You know, we might yeah. want the the lower amount. So I guess it's also like what comes first. Well, it is. First. Look what just happened tonight. You kind of knocked off three million dollar uh, purchase. So, I mean, these things happen. It depends on on what your decisions are and the select board and. Uh, we can't say definitely until we know what's going to be recommended and passes. Yeah. So, uh, Linda, well, maybe Dan would, would know this, but um, if the school locker room passed, the fire the fire truck passed, and the DPW at 225, I guess, what would be the total impact on, uh, on the tax rate for those three debt exclusion? Uh, let me look at the 225 real quick. Well, it, we might consider not borrowing for the 225 also. We might, and this again would be, uh, we. this is why you'd need to meet again because of the amount of free cash that we have, although we're saving for the budget, we all kind of have to look and see if that's, if that's how we want to spend some free cash. 225 is sort of that borderline. It might be too much, but I would want to consider that. The DPW would cost about 17 bucks a year for the average house. For borrowing 225, you're saying? Yeah, for f over five years. All right, so what what do we have for a total here? I got $17 for that. Well, 1796 and 178 is 291. All right. And that would be a five year bump for all those, correct? Yes, and that that's the first year. It would drop, it would go down from that point over the five years. Yeah, I think that's a much more stomachable number than 900-ish, so. Um, okay, and uh, we're, we're not gonna vote on recommending anything tonight as far as the Warren, you know, yes or no against the Warren articles. We just kind of hit the other ones, uh, Linda, if that's okay. Okay, uh, well, second is uh, the, the fire uh, department truck, um, 2.1 million for the ladder truck, um, 
that also passed. Well, not uh, well, it passed because we had two absent, two for, and one against uh, doing $2 million for the fire department's ladder truck. If we, this is one of those, if you order it now, you'll, you may see it in two or three years. And uh, we order it now, we don't borrow the funds for it now, which is what I've been saying about maybe front loading our payments to the locker room and getting some of that out of the way, make room for the fire truck. Um, so the Dan, the let's say, for example, you use that same 291 figure that that uh, Dan provided, um, but we're only borrowing for the locker rooms and um, and the 225,000 for the DPW right now, rather than holding that down to 113,113 dollars, $113, we might want to go ahead and bring raise it up to 250. Pay more of the locker rooms earlier, and then be ready to smooth right on with the same uh, same level of borrowing, same level of impact into that third, fourth, fifth year, and then have the fire truck being taken over, taking over those uh, the same level of payment. So, um, if you want to have Mike uh, Spagnable here to explain that at the next meeting. That's, that's, those are the kind of notes I want to be taking tonight. Who would you like to make sure is at your next meeting? So do you want to talk with someone at the school about the locker rooms? Or has we that's been talked about a lot over the years, but do you want someone to be here from the school and do you want some you want someone to be here for fire? I mean, what do you guys think? I'm good on the locker rooms. I mean, we've been talking about that for decades and uh, yeah, literally. Yeah. There's, there's no question it's needed. So I, you know, a locker room is a locker room. I think we, we, we need to do it, but um, Andy or Amy, do you want to see someone from the school here? I'm good on the locker room. Same. Okay. All right. How about fire truck? Um, I'd, I'd like to see Chief Spanknay will come if he can. So I sure. agree. Okay. Yeah. My, my question is, uh, Linda, maybe you can answer this. It's about um, the pricing of the vehicles. I know with some of the, on the purchases, sometimes they you can order it now, but there's no guarantee that the price is going to be locked and it's ready. It would it's lock. Ready. I did ask him that. It would. Okay. Um, anything else on capital before we move on? Anybody? Those are the debt exclusions. We have three other uh, capital items. A lot shorter than last year. Uh, these are the ones that would be paid with cash that we have on hand. Uh, one is the uh, replacing the ser server in town depart uh, for town departments. It's actually located in town hall, $20,000, which would be paid out of free cash. Uh, the second is oh, computer-aided EMD dispatch protocol. It's a $60,000 item. They have a grant, outstand uh, grant application outstanding for that one. So I think Chief Mason is fairly confident it's going to come through, but we do need to have um, a backup um, article on that to cover it in case the grant doesn't come through. And the third one, $5,000 for uh, any capital that might be needed uh, for replacements of various items in the Hadley Media. That comes out of the Hadley Media Enterprise Funds. So if we're lucky with the grant, then we're really only spending 20,000 out of free cash on, um, on capital items this year, which is why I'm kind of thinking about whether we want to put some, you know, a little bit more into the deep early DPW stage. So we'll see. So any questions on those items? Yep, yeah, I'm good. Anybody? All right. That's it for capital. Uh, do you just want to start at the top, Linda, and see if there's anything we need to, to hit? I mean, most of them are pretty much basic. You know, okay. Stuff, but. All right. Uh, so um, we uh, special town meeting is always when we make adjustments to the uh, to the budget. As in just by adjustments, I mean increases. Um, so I can go through those. Um, it is, to, uh, the, let me go to the total first for 269575 and, bef and before I get to that, let me tell you, we are anticipating about $1.3, $1.4 million in free cash, which I have written, I wrote to uh, the accountant 
over the weekend and said, when can we expect certified free cash? Because we would want that before town meeting. Uh, so the increases that we are looking at, one is uh, this would be a, a program for the treasurer's office. This is something I spoke with um, select board about a few weeks ago uh, that this is ClearGov. They have a budgeting program, which also includes a capital budgeting program. And the third part of it is uh, the budget, although it's related to budgets, it also will produce the budget book. And the reason that, I mean, this has been around a while, but the reason it's important, at, I've, I've come to find it important at this point is that um, I would like to be around long enough to make a transition and see it implemented and have it smoothly running be before before I move on and someone else comes in and, and needs to start. I don't think that um, moving through the spreadsheet system that I've been using and that David started before me, I think it's getting to be less and less um, feasible that we can expect that from someone who comes new on board. Um, I don't know, how, is that more explanation than you're looking for in the budget or you want me just run through and, and list them? I don't want to take too long. Um, legal expenses. I got a question. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on that, is that a one time um, or is that no. for software? Is that yearly? Yeah. So it's going to, it's just going to be $25,000 a year, which is why I put it in the budget. Now, the first year is going to be prorated because we haven't started yet. yet. So the proration is offset by the six to $7,000 transition fee. So it is actually going to end up to be about 25,000. Although this particular one is made up of about 19,000 for the last nine months and 6,000 for the transition. So it should be steady over the next few years. No, it's a, I, I wish it was one time, but this is just how it is. We have a constant interaction with the program. So this is a, is a con, this is going to be 20, around 25,000 expected every year. Okay. Now, is this going to take in place of the stipend that we do or no, that has nothing to do with this is more of like a software. This is software. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is software that anybody that would, that would be coming in is probably going to expect us to have. With this subscription, um, is there, this subscription, pardon? is there, is it, uh, with the subscription, is there a fair amount of support that's involved with this? Obviously, yes. there'll be a lot, a lot of your of, time and implementation. A lot of support. A lot of support. Uh, they do all of the transition, the $6,000 transition or six or seven. They do that themselves. And uh, we also get, uh, it will go back. You, you know, when you, when, you, when you see the budget that we give you each year, it shows the prior years. So this will continue to go back to 20. I said, even it's not a number of years. I like everything to be able to go back to 20, which was our sort of our turning, our turnaround year here when we hit COVID. So it's always good to be able to compare back to 20. So they're going to be uploading information from 20, 21, 22, 23. Now we're in 24 and going ahead and we'll be able to budget 25. Um, most of it is coming from, from our VADAR program, um, which is run by the accountant where I get reports from, but uh, it's really run by the accountant who's already sent all that information to them uh, so that we could get an early start. We sort of had a, a transitional understanding with them. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, uh, is, that's there, gonna... is there connectivity with VADAR or is that just going to be a separate no. subscription on its own? And we have uh, VADAR, we maintain separately. Uh, it can, uh, it can upload from VADAR to the new program, but there's not going to be a, uh, it's not going to be in real time. When there's changes in VADAR, it's not going to show up in the other as part of the history. That has to be manual entry. There is such, uh, Carolyn and I met with people who are able to do that. <laughs> it is so much more expensive, so uh, it's not something that we would even consider. Um, we, don't ha we don't operate that way at this point. I'm doing quarterly reports for select board. We were we were doing monthly at one point, but that's in some ways too much information and not enough information at the same time because so much of what happens with us, particularly revenues, is quarterly that it's not really very 
helpful to get um, a four month report. It's it, breaking at the quarters means everything, uh, the collections downstairs the, uh, for the different various things we bill for, water, sewer, taxes, that all happens quarterly and the big payments in from the state, they come quarterly. So we don't need to have the whole budget in real time. Um, this is this is the inexpensive route. <laughs> Yeah, can I just add to that, Linda? Just um, I, I want to make sure you guys realize that we did do a lot of due diligence with that and ask all those questions. Um, with the main concern of what Linda mentioned was a succession plan. In a few years, you do have departments that are going to be seeing retirements. And you can set up as a treasurer or a finance manager, you can set up your Excel sheets the way you want them. But to expect someone to come in and walk into that is very difficult. This is a very user friendly, both for department heads to enter their budgets as well. Um, so that was one of our focuses and hopefully to uh, relieve some of the uniqueness of uh, everybody's own, own reports that there be some standardization. So Linda did meet with another company, like she said, but it was it was too robust for us at this point. Is there any other um, did, did have you talked to any other towns that use this mm -hmm. and it really works for them? like our, our local, you know, people around our neighbors? Not our neighbors, because they're bigger than us. So, um, I mean, they, I, I consider this this uh, rel relative to other programs and other towns is, is like us using VADAR as opposed to them using MUNIS, which is just a, a monster of a program. Um, it is uh, well and happily used at Somerville. Um, and they've had it for quite a while. We, um, our accountant said they started it in Framingham, where he was before. Um, but as it turns out, he was using, they were using a portion of it, which we had too. If you, if ClearGov sounds familiar to you, there was a time probably five or so years ago, maybe a little bit more where there was this idea that we would have transparency Oh, by the way, this would provide transparency, but what we were initially doing, and this is when the company was first beginning, is the uh, it would be something where the taxpayers could go in and see where their dollars are going. It was um, a problem. We had a problem because we didn't have the right kind of chart of accounts to feed into it naturally, and our accountant uh, really didn't uh, put in the time that was needed to make to make that valuable. So this is just going to be a, automatically a part of what we're doing now is if we have the budget already there. Um, don't expect it if we if I you know if you approve this and it goes through, don't expect transparency in the first year. I um, because there I'm sure there'll be mistakes and um, mistakes are heard louder than the corrections after the fact. I just really can't operate like that the first year, but once we have our, uh, our budget approved, I would hope that it would be open to the public and perhaps in later years, we would have uh, some transparency along the way, but it, it's, it's something that other people will be able to log into and see. If you want me to send you materials on it, I, I can. Um, we are meeting with them again tomorrow and I can see what I can get to send to you, but... Um, but yes, it's it's an it's an investment okay. in our future way of doing business. We've got a, a huge budget now, a huge capital budget too is coming up, and there's a lot of balls in the air that we're trying to keep it all together and present it as a cohesive picture. And I'm hoping that this would really help and minimize errors uh, along the way. I hope. Okay. It'll be interesting to see. So it will probably change our format for the next annual meeting, I'm guessing. Well, well, one reason we wanted to go with these is that the worksheets look so much like um, what we're already doing. So uh, yes, it may, it will change things. Um, yeah. But hopefully, I, I don't know how else to, to uh, that we would be looking at the transition over the next five years, Amy. I really don't. Um, I just had some questions on what it was. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't have, I don't need to uh, look that much into the details. I just had a few questions. That's fine. Okay, sure. All right. Okay. We do, do, you, do, you want me to do, do you want me to do legal? Sure. 
Yeah. So legal is, uh, we are definitely anticipating an increase due to, we have two new unions that formed and that whenever you're starting a new union, you're definitely bringing in labor council in with that. Um, so that is some of the, some of those costs. Uh, I did go to, we did go to a flat fee to help keep the cost more predictable and steady. And that's been a good relationship with our town council, um, but labor and litigation, which is our two big expenses right now, we have several um, issues in litigation uh, that those are the two that it is, you are charged an hourly rate. And we predict uh, that this is what the increase in the cost will be for this year. Some of these cases aren't going to be done, I'm, I'm assuming, by June as well. So that's why it's an increase in the operating budget. Any um, questions? I guess if, unless we have questions, let's just do a broad overview on these rather than a lot of detail. Okay. I, I just, the only question when you, Aunt, when you go over these, can you tell us what, you know, is that so that legal expense is at the one time of that little increase or are we going to plan on all every year increasing our budget by another 15 because you just find us to be so i'm kind of on that is what, yeah when, what is the one time what is going to be a continuing so 15 i'm going to say um confidently it would be this year for the next year like i just mentioned I, there are some cases that are still under litigations we now have three four five unions uh, those aren't up for another year, uh, but I cannot tell you what it, that those costs are going to be um, two, you know, two years from now. But and I can do the speedy version, David. Is that what you want? Yeah, just because I know we're gonna have okay. to rehash a lot of this. Now. Okay, so the third one and the fifth one, I uh, want to do it that way because uh, one is the uh, computers, uh, which we buy each year in replacement. There's a replacement plan for our computers. We don't know exactly how much. And then the uh, police cruiser 82. I want to put those together because those are items that we used to put on the capital budget. Um, we do them every single year. So they're on the chopping block every year as to whether we need them or not. Uh, we always need them. They always pass. And because we had a, the free cash, it seemed like a good time to put it in the um, in the operating budget. So, Amy, to answer your question, yes, they'll be there every year now. <laughs> and um, and it passed the, uh, the, the capital planning committee actually voted to move these out of capital and into there. Uh, the ten thousand uh, uh, dollar insurance, um, the premiums uh, came down quite a bit by raising the town's deductibles. Susan's on if you have questions, but we wanted to put ten thousand dollars into the insurance account because we do need to pay the deductibles. We don't know how much each year. Whatever isn't spent isn't spent is going to come back in the budget. We just needed that set aside, and uh, and uh, there may have been some other expenses expenses in there, but very small, just like a few hundred for something. Um, the mosquito control fee, thousand five thousand. Uh, if you remember the last meeting, we put it on to pay the prior year for five thousand. We paid it on for the current year, and I completely forgot. I completely forgot to put in into the budget for twenty four. But yes, that's an ongoing one. We pay five thousand dollars a year, and it's going to go in and it needs to stay there each year. Veteran services, they, uh, the quote I was initially giving was 2000 low. And the last one is the uh, salary adjustments for, uh, we have one or two more new unions this year and there have been negotiations underway. There are some new contracts that have some raises and just general adjustments of that nature. There are some reasons we didn't want it itemized out at this time because of some Uncertainly and certainly in um, and because in some smaller departments you put a raise in there. And we know you know who it is, you know the name of the person. So at this point, um, uh, we wanted to keep it uh, somewhat open. I, I, you, you come in. You know what? Um, sorry, let me just. Oh, no, no, Anna, wait. Uh, it's the cleaners. Let me just go speak with them a moment, and I'll. Can't find my volume. I'll be right back. But um, Carolyn, <laughs> you're muted, Carolyn. Hi. Okay, I I can help you with any if you have any specific questions about that as well. It's it's going to be a combination of personnel contracts that were negotiated after July first. It's going to be a combination of all the two unions. 
um, and, and those adjustments and the non-unions typically, especially with one of ours is, is, is municipal employees. Uh, for that, for those that fall into that and can be a part of that union, they would have this. Uh, those that are not union, um, because of whether they're they just they are not allowed in the union because they have confidential responsibilities. We would give them the same increases. So that is what um, the union contracts and the salary adjustments reflect. And we're still in negotiation, so we will have some. Um, they're pretty close these numbers, but we're we're getting settled. So those um, we're pretty confident that number reflects that. Okay. Linda's back, but Linda, you're you're muted. There you go. Okay. Um, art, article two, our uh, capital returns money back into the, uh, back into the free cash, uh, for the first one and the other is lo the lower, uh, reduced, uh, borrowing coming down by just over 25,000 because plow truck came in lower than we had budgeted, which is always good. So this is, this is always the good article cleaning up. We always get money out of that one. And then we're back to the capital. Let's see past capital if there's, there are some financial ones. Oh yes, prior year bills. This again is a staple each year. There's just, we're never not going to have this. The year ends and then more bills come in or they get found. Um, uh, it does not, it, they do come out of free cash, but understand they would have come out of free cash had they've been paid on time too. So, I mean, it really is, we do our best to try and get these things paid by uh, on time, but um, it's just inevitable they don't. Um, the question: the comprehensive environmental is that the um, what's that related to? I'd have to ask Scott what that's for, Andy. He's we have multiple uh, projects that comprehensive environmental is working on, so I'd have to see what specifically which one that was. Let's. See. Do you have Algonquin. that in front of you, Linda? It's Algonquin. Okay, that's Algonquin. Okay. Yep. And the other are our financial articles. We have the CPA, some extensions. Uh, you aren't going to see, we, we had in there, but you're not going to see this anymore. Remember, uh, they, they put in the, uh, they have their returns also uh, with the balances that come back. Uh, but they are now putting into their um, articles the language such as is down here, which says if they don't pay it within three years of the date of the town meeting, any, un any unspent funds come back in. So it's an automatic roll back in. So that's what's happening there. And they did give extensions for a few more. By the way, we do a number of extensions each year, and they've decided they're going to change their two-year uh, deadline for spending things to three. So that will decrease a bit in the future. Um, I don't know anything about the CPA articles, I'm afraid. Uh, but uh, if you would like to have Mary Thayer here, I can I can suggest that. I can talk or, to him a little bit too. I would say yes, Linda, just because uh, Paul said he had some concerns with one of the articles. So um, I'm sure he'll have some questions next time. Okay, and I think they only Andy, have one. Andy represents. Um, CPA for finance. So yeah, I, I said I, I can answer some of the questions. Oh. There is only well, there one article. There is only one article, but I'd be happy to wait till Paul is on if, if um, that's the preference of you two. So, do you want uh, Mary to come, Andy, or do you want to handle it? Next, pretty straight, this is pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, I'll uh, I we can ask Mary if she'd like to join, but um, um, okay, but you're good with it. Okay. Then some zoning articles do, 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 and opioid, opioid fund. Um, we have three articles on the opioid stabilization fund. This past year, we collected close to well, $45,838 in opioid funds from, oh, Carolyn, you, know you enjoyed this one. Oh, you want me to? So <laughs> we... From medical companies, go ahead. <laughs> yes, it's a, it was a 
almost like a class action suit. It was about five pharmaceuticals that um, had to pay out to all cities and governments throughout the United States um, as an impact from um, overprescription of opioids. So this is, they, we receive a funding. I don't really understand what the, the formula is, but right now what we're looking at is there is a mental health position that um, is shared right now through a grant with the COA and the um, uh, the police department, but the police has, to, they have to have that. Um, and this is to try to st stabilize that position to have it ongoing. So, cause that grant is just temporary. So this is to have the town have their own one versus sharing it with the several other communities. So that's, but you have to, we had to open up a, we had to do it in a three step. It's three steps, right? Yes. Uh, we had to set up a stabilization fund, um, transfer the money that we have, which is about 45,000, a little bit over that. And then we have to authorize the spending of it. So that's what those three it, articles are. It's very in, inefficient, but the whole system of what was classic case so of the cart ahead of the horse, horse ahead of whatever the expression is, it just things, the money came in before there was any authorization about how to, where to put it, how to receive it, how to spend it. So we're just going to have to be uh, a year behind until the, there's some legislation pending to to have it go into a special revenue fund and spend out of the special revenue fund, which would be much better, but yes. this is how it is now. And it's several years, several years yeah. that we will be receiving funds. I'm just curious. So this is through the police department currently? No, it's not. It's well, it's a grant that is funded. Um, I, it's, it's to help meet the post requirements um, to have a counselor, um, but it's also do helping the senior center uh, dealing with, elders who are either abusing drugs, alcohol, or for other issues. So it has to have an element of uh, drug prevention in, in um, education. So does this uh, stabilization fund amount of the 45, 83, 47, does that cover the mental health professional for the year? Yes, or? it would. It would, it would have to. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. It, is that what we're paying right now? 45 a year? I mean, it's no. a, that's what the grant's paying right now, forty-five a year to this person. No, we're sharing that position, and I and let me just be clear: we are we are simply in the exploring stages right now for this. We're going to get this money no matter what, but we needed to have um, we we've, we've spoken with um, other entities. This looks like the best approach to take, so we're still working out some of the details. But it's money that we that has been given to the town to prevent drug abuse and addiction, and we feel this is the best place to start to look at. If that changes, we would certainly bring it back to the town. There's a lot, you know, it's, there's a lot to still look at, but we, we don't we don't want it to sit there. I, mean, I have to report back what we're using it for. Um, so we need to find something that'll be, be the best use of those funds. I think you have a good idea on, you, on going forward and, and because grants, don't last, you know, and then, and, but you like the services that they're providing. So that is a good idea. I just didn't know. It, it sounded like we're putting another um, person on um, payroll. So I didn't know how that was working. So I just kind of want to be clear on if this was a new position that we're opening up. That's not what this is requesting. So, because I, I, I want to be honest with you, Amy, we really are still in all of the due diligence for, um, to getting all the information for this. Um, it would probably be a position for in Hadley, but I'm not going to say that that's 100%. It, we may have a better use of it if it is a shared position in another community the way it is right now. It may be a support to that, to that arrangement, but there has been it's so utilized by the COA and the police department that we want to make sure that Hadley is has as much service as possible. So I'll definitely keep everybody as well, you know, the select board and you, the finance committee updated on that. Okay. So it, it needs to come out of free cash, but understand it's in free cash and we had no choice but to deposit it to free cash. So this is causing our free cash to be higher, but now we need to spend it. So that's how that one goes. This is like moving those cups around. <laughs> it is. We give it, then we take it away. <laughs> and that's a that's a road, and I don't think that's not a finance committee. That is the end of it. Um, there are 
you'll see different numbering already. This has changed. It went out to finance committee uh, to um, department heads. Uh, oh no, this is the. Huh, I don't know. No, this is the good one. Okay. I don't know which one I sent to you. Um, but one thing has changed. You might have had it that the, the zone ones were two different articles. Now they have they're one, and uh, we pulled off one of the items on for Scott, and we're still getting information from town. So there might be some minor changes, and we'll get that all cleared up hopefully very soon. All right. Well, thank you. Um, we'll just plan on next Wednesday at six p.m. via Zoom, and. Anything, anybody else have anything tonight that we have to hit before we go? All right. Well, thank you, Linda. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, I guess uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Amy, second by Andy, and I'll roll call it, Amy. Yes. Andy. Yes. And I am yes as well. All right, good night, everybody.